Welcome back to the pea fields of Perthshire. And I'm not alone. Once again, I'm out with Medieval Marty to give him his official nickname. Um, so we're out, we're on a, a field we detected last year before it got planted. It's had peas on it, it's just been harvested, it's produced silver milled, it's produced a few little relics and artifacts, a beautiful big chunky ring, which is probably 17th century. Um, you got a horse's head in this field. Uh, yeah, I did actually, yeah. And it's produced some turners from the 1600s as well. So there is some history here and hopefully some treasures to be had. As ever, if you're not subscribed, then please hit the button. And without further ado, let's go and try and find some treasure. First hole, live dig. Somewhere about there. Oh, easy digging. It's the great thing about pea fields as well is that normally they're flat as a pancake. So dead easy to swing. Might be slightly in the wrong place. Let's try one in there. Hmm. Kind of vanished. Oh, Marty says he's got a coin on the first hole. We'll have a wee look at that in the minute. Once, hopefully I've got one on my first hole as well. Would be nice. Well, it's round, but is it a coin? No, it's not. Ah, it's a little stud. It's actually maybe even a bit off a parasol. Where's my brush? It is. So that's off a parasol, a little uh, umbrella. That's the little spokes where the little uh, metal bits would come out from. So you could take some shade from the burning sun in Persia. Right, let's have a wee look. Marty's come over. Let's have a wee look at what he's got. Well, there we are, straight off the mark for Martin. I'd barely started. And he's straight in with a coin. So in pretty reasonable condition, as ever, it's George V. And he's got a date on the bottom of 19... What did you say? 36? 32. 32. 32. Mm. Yep, I think you're right. 32. 1932. So, there you go. George V. Seven years before the outbreak of the Second World War. Fantastic. It's looking like it's going to be a busy field. That was my parasol just there. And right here, similar output, but better sounding, a bit more consistent and shallow. This field's a lot better than the last one, that's for sure. Nope. Oh, there it is. It's a bit of pipe. No, it's a screw. No, it's a, oh, it's a thing. It's not a bit of pipe. It could be a razor. And I think it is. And there you go. So I think that's the stem off of a disposable razor. And it's probably from around the probably early to middle 1900s, I'm guessing. I think the blade would screw on up there. So an early repl replaceable bladed razor. But it's a nice find. We have a beauty. Dare I say silver? I think it's too big a target copper or big bit of lead maybe bottle top or something or anything else oh well I tell you what it's a coin and I've just made a mess of that because I could have got a little clod and an imprint I think it's a coin hmm 
It looks like it. But it's seen better days. But it looks like we're off the mark. So I'll give this a wee clean up and get back to you. It is a coin, but it's in a terrible state. Um, very, very unusual, uneven shape. It's not a button. It's definitely a coin. But it's just nothing there. I mean, it's probably Georgian, could be earlier, could be slightly later, but either way, it is a coin. Um, my guess would be probably late 16 or early to middle 1700s. Maybe William and Mary or um, George the First or Second. Plenty of targets. Every one of them seems to be coming up in the 90s. 94, this is an absolute screamer. 97, 98, so I think we're into brass or bottle top territory, unfortunately. Well, we're not. We've got a plug, I think. I think we have. I think we've got another plug. <laughs> got one of these the last time. Um, well, a couple of digs ago, but probably a bath plug or a drinking trough for animals. I suppose it could be a fuel cap off an old tractor as well, but... Well, probably a hundred or so, 150, a couple of hundred years old at the most. Well, it wouldn't be a day's detected without one. We've got a spoon. It's actually only a 45, which is staggering for oop, for such a small, uh, uh, for such a big target. But uh, as you can see, I've just snapped it. Uh, I thought it was going to be a little bit more bendy than that. And we've got electroplate nickel silver again, EPNS. So I'm guessing Victorian. Would have been very silvery and shiny when it was made, but it's copper, or copper alloy, in base. Probably around 1900. I don't know what it is. Often it's the one you don't film that turns out to be the good thing. And I think we've got a coin, and it looks pretty chunky. Well, it doesn't look in great condition. The ground's very wet here. I think it's a coin, though. Yep. It looks like a coin to me. Right, I think we might be struggling to get in and off that, but it could be Georgian, maybe. Incredibly, the coin is in terrible condition. And what is the only bit that's really legible? Well, it's the date, of course. How about that? 1912. So it is a penny. It is George V. So he'd not long taken the throne. His father... Edward the Seventh died in 1910, and George the Fifth became king uh, from 1910 until 1936. And 1912 was a fairly tumultuous year. Don't know if there's a head on there. I think it's there. Yeah, it is. Uh, the Titanic set sail on its way to America, struck an iceberg, and about one and a half thousand people drowned. And another incredibly significant thing happened. And the reason I know this date is because I actually just looked at it about a week ago for some clients. A woman called Mary Ann MacLeod was born in 1912 in the Outer Hebrides in Lewis, off the west of Scotland. And Mary Ann MacLeod went on to marry a man with the surname of Trump. She emigrated to the US, uh, she, was, she was about 18 years of age, this was around about 1930, she emigrated to the US and uh, she married and later had a son, well I think she had about five or six children, but she had one called Donald Trump. So there you go, Donald Trump's mother was born in Scotland, 1912. I've already had the bit of cutlery with the teaspoon. Now I've had the doorknob. All I need now is the ring pull and I'll have the trifecta. Oh, we've got a thing. Actually came out a hole. It also had aluminium in it, so it was given a real bag of spanners as a signal. Don't know what it is. Um, might be some sort of pendant-y thing, but then again it might just be something Agricultural. I'll dry it up. We'll have a wee look at it in case there's any decoration or detail on it. I thought I could make something out on it. 
I think it's an early type of animal tag. I think there's numbers there. A three, a four maybe, a seven, a nine. So I think it is. I think it's an early version of an animal tag. Probably a hundred odd years old, but I don't think I've ever had one of that type before. But anyway, if you recognise it, then let me know. I have just very unexpectedly got a bit of silver, called Martin over to have a look at it, but he has also just got a coin, a George the Sixth halfpenny, you can see the head coming through there looking to the left hand side, I've given it a wee rub a dub but I haven't checked to see if we've got a date yet, but if we do it's going to be somewhere on this side, we do actually have a date, it's a ship's halfpenny. And it's 1937, so two years before the outbreak of the Second World War, when Hitler invaded Poland. And that happened in 1939. Kite's back, isn't it? Oh, we've got a kite. And let me try and get you this on film. Now, there you go, there is a red kite. So they were reintroduced to Scotland, I want to say in the 1990s. And uh, I think they were brought in, I think there was about... Over, over the course of 10 or 15 years, I think they brought in almost 100 of them from Scandinavia. And they were reintroduced, and now they're thriving in Scotland. Well, very unexpectedly, I've got myself a bit of silver. I odd numbed about whether I... I thought, actually, when I got it, I thought it was a bit of junk. It's a kind of leaf shape. There's what's left of the pin. And... You know, it almost looks like it's got a face at that end, but I think that's just the way it's split at the bottom. But you can actually see there are hallmarks just there. And at that end, it's kind of like a crown design. Oh, kind of like a crown on that end. I've got no idea what it is. I mean, maybe it was like a sort of leaf shape originally, but there might be the faintest little bit of decoration on there, but I can't really make it out. But I'm back on the silver again. But it's an interesting and slightly weird little find. Date-wise, I think it's probably like 1850, 1900. Might be just a little brooch. But it is silver. It is hallmarked. And it's... I just can't believe how much silver I'm finding these days. And it's another bit of jewellery. So if you recognise the design, if you can see something that I'm missing, then let me know in the comments below. Fantastic! Film this one, just in case. Uh, it's not superb now, to be honest. I thought it sounded a little bit better than that. But, well, all is not lost quite yet. Well, it is now. Because that's not a coin. What is that? What on earth is that? It's a funny shape. Whatever it is. Oh, get you in the shop might help. It's got some sort of iron stuck to it as well. It's like a little... It's almost like a little hook. Hmm. Weird. No idea what that is. And if you know, comment below. Marty's got himself a Pam Guard. Haven't had one of them for a wee while. And this is for leather working. So it's made of lead, slightly domed on one side, normally flat or concave on the other. This one's got a few marks in it. So this was fit in the palm of your hand. So when you're working with a needle or such like on leather, um, it protects your hand. So you'd strap it to your hand. And often they would use shells as the moulds because shells, if you think of the shape of them, are naturally concave. So they fit perfectly. So, I mean, it could be any age. It could be a few hundred, three, four hundred years old, but it could be a thousand or even a couple of thousand years old. These go way back to the Roman times, to the Iron Age. So an interesting little find. Nice little bit of history. Well done, Martin. Cheers. 
We've got a green thing. Seems kind of heavy. Ooh. Oh, it's a big green thing. It's a big green thing with a big bit of iron stuck to it, I think. Or is it a stone? No, I think it's a... What is that? What on earth is that? A mystery. Got no idea what that is. It's a thing. Oh, really? That's weird, isn't it? It looks like it looks like it's got a bit of age to it. You know, the metal, the colour, the patination on it. But it's got a great big iron bit attached. Hmm. Strange. So, what do you reckon? What on earth is that? Answers on a postcard. I mean, it could be a buckle, maybe? Is it a buckle? I don't think so. But anyway, it's a thing, but it certainly looks like it's got some age to it with a coloration. So if you know, comment below. Well, I mentioned rings at the start. And Martin's not quite got a big ring. <laughs> oh, sorry, I could have I could have phrased that better. Um, <laughs> Martin's got a wee ring. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Martin. Martin, 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 what am I going to do with you? Um, so yeah, Martin's got a wee ring. <laughs> uh, I don't know how else to say it. Right, anyway, right, calm ourselves. But look, you can clearly see Martin's ring is thick. <laughs> uh, it's not, it's not quite, it's not quite bejeweled, but it's... <laughs> It's, uh, it's definitely got decoration on it. So Martin has got himself a wee ring. <laughs> oh, so, right, okay, right, enough, enough. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, it's a little copper alloy ring. And, um, yeah, probably a couple of hundred years, 150 years old, something like that. Someone with very small fingers, a lot smaller than mine. And he's certainly done a lot better than I just did, which is, uh, I've got this little eyelet. So there you go. Well done, Martin. On the rings. Yeah, okay, Martin's got himself a coin there just off the back of his wee ring. <laughs> oh, this is just getting ridiculous. It's a lovely little half penny. It's actually got a kind of slightly different look to it from usual half pennies. Britannia and such like, it just looks a wee bit different. Maybe they changed the design slightly. But it's got a date, 1933, do you think that is, or is it 35? I think it was 35. 35, 1935. So it's George V, yet again, pretty reasonable condition, and uh, just before he died. He died in 1936, euthanised by his own doctor, who didn't want him dying, and uh, it not been reported in the morning papers. So he killed him, make sure he made the morning edition. Lovely. We've got a doubler here. Ninety. Ninety-one. A big silver coin spill. Or two bits of aluminium can. Side by side. What do you think? I think actually the other one sounded like a better target. This could even just be big iron. Right, let's get the pinpointer because I'm not convinced I'm in the right place. I hope it's shallow. Well, I'm in the right place, but I'm going to turn you off for a second. Okay, we're out this time, somewhere around here. That is, what on earth is that? It's a thing. Some sort of moulding, maybe? Well, I wonder if the other signal, which is identical, is going to be another part of it, because it looks like it's broken off of something. So there may well be more of it around. Well, it's, yeah, some sort of, 
I'm guessing some sort of decorative moulding. Look at that, there's a leaf there. So yeah. It's a thing. Not particularly old, I would say, probably Victorian, but I don't know, furniture or clock decoration or some sort of decorative moulding, but we'll check out the other signal and see if that gives us a clue. Well, the other thing was a bit of aluminium, so, junk. I was pretty sure I had a tarpaulin, um, you know, like a tie down for a tarp, an eyelet, sorry, for a tarp, but if I can get this to focus better, it's actually a button. It's a military button. There you go. Let me just see if I can get this to focus better. Yeah, okay. Oh, that's more like it. Okay, so you can see there's a maker's name on the back, but unfortunately I'm not going to be able to read that. The little loops there as well, the eyelet for the button. And on that side, I've given it a wee rub. And it's come up a little bit better, as you'll see. So that is, I think, the Black Watch Regimental Button. Their headquarters are based in Perth which is not far away at all. A regiment with a long history in Scotland. They're now part of, I think, the Royal Scots, but the name sort of lives on. And uh, they've got a regimental museum in Perth, which is well worth a visit if anyone is visiting. Uh, the regiment was founded following a rebellion in 1715, the Jacobites. And uh, they created six what were called watches, uh, they took three regiments from the Clan Campbell, and then I think there was also a regiment who were raised from Clan Fraser, and also by Clan Gunn and Clan Grant. So six different clans, eh, sorry, six different regiments, three different, no, that would be four different clans, although the Campbells made up 50% of them, and they were all loyal to the new Protestant monarchy, which by 1715 was George I. The Hanoverians. So, um, so they basically they think the name the Black Watch came from the the type of plaid, the the tartan that they wore, which was the blue and the green, the dark blue green tartan. But also the Black Watch was related to their black hearts because they um, they used a lot of uh, their power to settle old clan rivalries. So uh, read into that what you wish. But either way, it's probably First or Second World War. Oh, and also, incidentally, Black Watch, another suggestion is it was because they were there to deal with the uh, the blackmail. Blackmail, the word blackmail is actually a Scottish word. It comes from the Gaelic blech and mal, which is to get tribute in, in return for protection. So blech mal is from the Gaelic Scottish language and became blackmail because they were basically extorting people, particularly cattlemen, who were driving through particular areas, driving their cattle or droving their cattle. And basically, you paid blackmail money in order to keep your cows safe. Extortion. So the Sicilians have got nothing on the Scottish Highlanders. Brilliant. Probably First or Second World War. And why is it in the field? Because it was probably ex-military jackets that the farm workers were wearing. Nice find. Check out that for a lump of bronze. It weighs about half a pound. Um, so, purpose unknown, but it is a piece of bronze. Now, incidentally, Martin um, has actually got a, an item that he found in this exact field uh, last year in the museum just now. And it looks like the funnel for casting two bronze axe heads. And the suggestion is it could be bronze age, could be about 2,500 three thousand years old so when you do find a big lump of bronze like this you do wonder who knows anyone recognize a particular shape or something to it not that i can see but an interesting little thing well done martin i might have myself just talking about the black watch i might have a red coat i might have a wee soldier i think i do he's got a kilt on as well <laughs> There you go. Look at that. He's headless. He's legless. Looks like he's lost half his back as well, but at least I can tell what it is. 
So we've got a wee, well who knows, maybe someone from the Black Watch Regiment, because there's a bit of a green blue tinge going on there, on the kilt as well. So there you go, a wee toy soldier, or what's left of him, he's literally been through the wars. And uh, they became known as the, well originally they were called Johnny Lobsters, I think if I remember rightly, and then they became known as Redcoats through the middle part of the 1700s because of their distinctive red tunics. So why did they wear red tunics? Well, there's lots of different reasons and theories. First of all, the red colour was very cheap. The military had to produce masses and masses of, uh, of jackets for the, the military because Britain's empire was huge and red was the cheapest colour. Um, also, in the field of battle with people with muskets and cannons, smoke, friendly fire was a great risk. So red made you stand out. Um, so you weren't shot by your own side. So you were visible on the battlefield. But that also meant you were visible to the enemy. Some people suggest that they wore red so that when they were shot, the enemy didn't see the blood. I think that's a bit of a myth. But it's a good story, isn't it? I think the fact your guts are hanging out would probably be the giveaway that your enemy would know. So I don't think they'd be too bothered about that. But there you go. He's got his wee rifle. He's got his wee kilt. And it's probably, I would guess, turn of the last century. 1900, 1920s. Probably a little boy or girl's pride and joy. Again, another one that I don't film because it doesn't sound very good. And it turns out to be a coin. It's a half penny. George V, I'm guessing. Um, I think so. Yeah, I think he is. I think it is. Might be struggling to get a date off it though. No, no, we've got one. I think. Oh, the wind is howling. Howling, howling. 1917, so during uh, the Great War, 17, I think that was Passchendaele, the Battle of Passchendaele, which was another disaster, they didn't learn from the Somme, or Ypres, or all the other terrible conflicts where the great idea was to, to, uh, to march in slow procession towards the enemy machine guns, it's actually quite a nice coin on that side, bendy thumb is doing its job. So yeah, 1917, the military sort of era theme continues. Three items with a military connection. Well, the coin, I suppose, a date connection. Nice, half a penny. Very similar readout to the half penny. So I'll learn my lesson and film it this time. 8081. We're out, I think. Might actually be another target under the ground. I think it is. It is, because there's still a target in the hole. Right, and get back to you in a second. We might have back-to-back -back coins, you know. Oh, nearly. Yep, I think we do. Although this one has seen better days. There's another taco. Or half a taco. And looking pretty crusty as well. Right, it might be hard pushed to get anything off this one, but I will do my best. Literally only 10 feet away from the last coin. And look at the difference in condition. Martin's got himself silver now. Unfortunately, it's only a small amount of silver. It looks to me like a pocket watch, or part of a pocket watch. So the, the rest of it will be here somewhere. But it's um, probably about a tenth of a pocket watch. It would have been much bigger than that. But you can just see some of the decoration on it. Almost certainly Victorian into the Edwardian periods of 1850 to 1920, give or take. But it is a bit of silver. So well done, Marty. And you can see the inside as well. 
some of the little lines. Well, amazingly, I managed to actually get a little bit of detail off that. So you can see Britannia seated there on the reverse. I also managed to give it just a little bit of a straighten using pure brute strength. And on the other side, it's George V. I can't see him, but I can make out the letters Eus for Georgius and also a number or a Roman numeral of V, George V. So sometime between 1910 and 1936. Getting towards the end of the day. That was the George V right there. And this is a screamer. And that's it right there on the surface. Well, no wonder it was a screamer. It's a bit of a hinge or something. Oh well, agricultural maybe. A weak little 63, I just thought it was just a random little piece and then I could feel these little knobbly bits on the outside edge. I turned it over, gave it a wee brush and look, there's a flower starting to come through. It's another piece of uh, jewellery. It's another bit of jewellery. Maybe part of a locket or a pendant. Would have probably had stones set in it at one point, but there aren't any left now. So when they're not throwing coins away, then silver away, they're throwing jewellery away in these fields. So yeah, part of a part of a little copper alloy pendant might have originally been silvered. Possibly there's been a little loop there at the top which is broken off. But it is definitely a little flower design. Probably again Victorian 1850-1900s. Well folks, that's us. We're going to leave it there. Uh, I'll do the summary when, uh, when I get home because it's just too windy. Sorry about the hair as well. Not having the best of days today with the old hair. Um, but, uh, well, pretty fantastic day. Yeah. Uh, I think I probably got five, well, in this field, I think I probably got five or six coins. I think I got two in the other. Yeah, I think I but got I got four in this one. You got four? Two, yeah. two in the other. And then, um, what else we got? Well, you've got a bit of silver for the pocket watch. I've got a bit of silver with a little brooch. In the last field, I got the little bit of silver, which is the little love heart. And uh, Marty got a wee ring. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I was trying to push that through without laughing. So anyway, Martin's got a wee ring as well. I got um, a little brooch, I got the wee soldier, I got the black watch button. So plenty of targets and I'm definitely going to be back on this field first chance we get. So as ever, if you like what you see and you have not already subscribed, then please hit the button. And hopefully as well, you'll give us a wee thumbs up. Right, so say goodbye, Marty. Cheerio, bye. Right, cheerio, bye. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.